Rodeo was previously planned to be used for more than just Titans. The Reapers and Drones were also both rodeoable, with the unique ability to hack them while doing so. Unfinished animations for the drone rodeo and hacking still exist in the files. A rodeo minigame was tested. Titans used to allow multiple pilots to rodeo at the same time, swapping between multiple different positions. Prowlers used to have the ability to rodeo attack Titans, with some animations being left over. Prowlers have an unused execution animation. Prowlers still have an animation from one of the teaser trailers. Prowlers have basic wall running animations. There are multiple different unused Prowler scripted animations where they get destroyed by Titans. Marvins were initially hackable and would be able to equip weapons and fight alongside the player, though I'm pretty sure this is just a leftover functionality from the Titanfall 1 campaign. Dropships are referenced multiple times in the scripts as being hackable, and Respawn didn't actually fully cut this feature. The gunship entity actually still has a hacking range in retail, where if you get close enough and hold the interact key, it'll crash you back to the lobby. By making some minor modifications to the game files and changing some launch parameters, you can access the respawn's development menu, though most options are inoperable. Underneath the gauntlet map is an unused version of the Titan pedestal, in the same art style as the Titanfall 1's gauntlet. When you reach that segment of the mission, a duplicate Lastimosa will also appear down there. Also outside the map is an unused skybox element. The training map also has a lot of hidden checkpoints left over from development, mostly templates for recording the ghosts, but there are also some NPC test sequences. In the pre-alpha version of the gauntlet, the fog had a yellow tint, the player spawned with an RE45, the dialogue was slightly different, and it was much easier to get out of the map. The pre-alpha's gauntlet weapon selection is much different than in retails, most notably lacking the EV8 auto. The campaign trailer from the pre-alpha shows Elastimosa and Anderson using Cooper's model as a placeholder, despite their models being finished by that time, meaning the clip was recorded at an even earlier stage of development. Elastimosa's model includes some early versions of the animations used in that level. There are multiple different unreleased game modes, Bomb, Frontier Defense, Fort War, Frontier War, however you want to call it, uh, all of which have unused UI elements, announcer audio files, script functionality. The battery pads for the Titan Brawl game mode have different variants which have other items on them, most notably a double barrel shotgun weapon which uses a mastiff as a placeholder. There are unused revive mechanics functional in the scripts. There are also references to item pickups and medical gear. There's an unfinished ping menu, or a quick chat menu that has a lot of different emoji icons made for it that they never finished. Bison is an unused melee class titan, which is referenced multiple times in the art books as well as in the scripts. There's a fully completed titan weapon, animated and usable in retail, and judging by the notes in the book, the Scorch Prime model is likely modified from Bison. There's a fully animated kunai model for melees, but it's hard to tell what it would have actually been used for. There's an unfinished model and animation set for a pilot sword called the Bolo Sword, and it features multiple different upgraded weapon variants. The Bolo Sword also has an unused pilot execution animation. On the note of upgrades, there are multiple abilities and weapons which also have upgraded variants left over in the scripts. It's been theorized by others to be a cut campaign feature, but personally judging based off of unused UI elements for Frontier Defense, I believe this would have been part of an upgrade tree, or it was just scrapped in favor of Monarch's upgrades. There's an unused ability called Arc Blast which would have given the player stim and blasted an EMP wave around them. There are script references and leftover weapons for an engineer drone or engineer class of some kind. There's a fully cut Titan ability called Ground Slam referenced in the strings, alongside a couple of other interesting weapons. The Titan bosses from campaign were going to react to the player through pre-rendered VDU overlays. This can be seen in early development footage as well as a test sequence that was left over in the pre-office files. There are static boss overlays left over in the pre-alpha's UI textures featuring concept art instead of finished models, as well as a reference image they stole from an anime. Also in the pre-alpha's UI are some placeholder minimaps which use screenshots from the hammer editor. Among these minimaps is one for an unreleased level, which was scrapped in favor of a different layout. In both the alpha and retail UI textures, there are multiple icons for weapons that were never added. There are lots of unused Elastimosa dialogue files most notably a different ending sequence for the gauntlet. We're taking back the frontier. 5% to 25. That's proof of our strength. We're all in this together, Cooper. No one's alone here. Intel said this was a demilitarized planet. Of course it was wrong. The intel's always wrong. The pre-alpha contains a lot of placeholder campaign dialogue for literally every mission and character, a lot of which going by a different script. Standouts from these include some cut jokes between BT and Jack, 
a slightly more talkative 6-4, a completely removed scientist character, and an alternate set of dialogue for the ending sequence of the game. We can't just fly through that, it's impossible. Incorrect. Our chances of successfully maneuvering past the battleship Malta are 0.02%. Great odds. That is an acceptable combat effectiveness rating. Are you nuts? I am comprised of several thousand nuts and bolts. I do not see the relevance to our current situation. This is our thing now, isn't it? You throwing me. It is a convenient and optimal choice given the current situation. Welcome to the 6-4, Coop. Coop? Everybody needs a nickname. I don't think he likes it. How close can you fly this thing? We'll get you in spitting distance. Hang tight, Coop. There's a guy on top of a dropship shooting at us. You heard me. He's standing on a damn dropship. And he's shooting at us. Dr. O'Brien. There you are. Come in, come in. I have something I want to show you. I hope your companion doesn't mind, but I'll close the doors while we talk. They've had patrols out every hour, chattering on those megaphones, trying to figure out how to get to me. That's fine. My friend can take care of himself. Didn't know this would be a panic room. Hmm. Looking at the blueprints here, there should be a magnetic crane nearby. Try to use that to load the transponder into the cart. Dr. O'Brien, I got the transponder into the cart. Pretty sure I can't connect it to the tracks on my own, though. Got any ideas? Not to worry. I'm sending Marvins out to take care of it. There we are. Our precious cargo is loaded and in route. Excellent. Just excellent. Honestly, you may have a future in applied sciences. Not sure I'd fit in at a lab, but thanks. Of course, of course. You're more of a hands-on problem solver. My field agent returns. I hope you enjoyed it outside. The recycled air in this sealed room makes me feel positively anesthetized. Nice weather, but a rough neighborhood. Lots of IMC in the area. We need to keep moving. They're only going to come back stronger. Oh yes, yes indeed. The IMC aren't easily dissuaded. So, next steps. Cooper, we have teams on route, but they won't make it in time. It's up to you and BT. Our analysis shows the fold weapon can be destroyed from the inside. Launch BT to the center of the rings. His Vanguard class reactor might be powerful enough to destabilize the Ark. I know BT's Auto Titan system is down, Cooper. I'm sorry. You're gonna have to do this manually. Cooper, we're all proud of you. You're a real pilot. So I'll get to die on this planet after all. You'll be saving 40 million souls on Harmony, pilot. I wish there was another way. But you and BT are their best chance. Briggs out. Copy that. I'll get it done. Effect and Cause was initially going to have the player rebuilding BT in the past and then hiding him in a cave to retrieve in the future. Not much remains of this iteration, but it's still interesting to note. Effect and Cause was also going to feature an ability to save certain prisoners from the later half of the mission, which had unique dialogue and animation created for them before ultimately being scrapped. What's going on? This isn't our colony. Where's James? Ah, my head. There are also leftover animations of IMC soldiers watching human experimentation and test subjects being tortured. Underneath the map by this door is an invisible light blocker, for some reason. Far outside the Colosseum map is a giant skybox cube using dev textures. Kane was originally going to eject from his Titan and fight you as a pilot. Pilot AI at one point was much more advanced, featuring jump kit usage and sliding. Placeholder boss intro animation still exists in the files. The pre-alpha contains some unpolished BT fight sequences. I'd imagine these were most used for testing. As most people know, the pre-alpha had a different pulse blade model, which used Viper's helmet, but did you know that Viper's retail model has an incorrectly textured backside as a result of using this earlier version? Despite the pre-alpha having very limited class selection, the models for the locked classes did exist to varying states of completion. Most are fairly similar, mostly lacking female variants, but it, there are a couple standouts like AWOL Hollow Pilot and Stim which have different textures. Alongside the new pilots in the pre-alpha are some leftover Titanfall 1 pilot models, which can be modded back into retail very simply. 
Interestingly, the male battle rifle pilot was actually left over in retail already on the mission Trial by Fire. Also in the pre-alpha, the models for all the Titanfall 1 Titans are left over. In retail, there are still unique AI scripts for all the Titanfall 1 Titans, as well as their textures, but their models were removed. They can pretty simply be modded back in using the alpha models, but they crash depending on where they get damaged. The pre-alpha has some unused script functions for Titan dismemberment, but this was clearly never finished and it didn't affect gameplay in any way. There are some unused animations and script functionality in retail for Walking Sentry Turret. The final mission used to feature a short sequence where the player witnesses the Apex Predators going up an elevator with the Ark, but was ultimately cut. To this day, remnants of the scene are left over out of bounds. The mission, the Ark, has the leftover developer checkpoints, some of which are inaccessible and crash the game, but a notable one that doesn't is a sequence used from the campaign trailers. The crane vehicles on the beacon have some unused functionality for moving the cargo up and down and in and out. The Pre-Alpha has a placeholder version of the Respawn logo. It also has the leftover animations from the Titanfall 1 campaign prototype. All of the mission and map descriptions are completely different in the alpha. Outside the mission, Blood and Rust are multiple dropships which are used for scale reference. Outside the map, Dry Dock is a leftover development model showing grunt engagement ranges. You probably already know about the level designer's signature on the map Complex, but did you know there's another one on the mission The Ark, which plays dialogue when you find it? Nice work, Coop. The pre-alpha tech test had a different main menu background. The Titan health bars were originally split into regenerating segments. After a segment gets depleted, it wouldn't be able to regenerate that one naturally, needing a battery to be replenished. Although this system was cut, the battery stayed, and that system is to think why you need multiple batteries to revive BT in the intro mission. Blisk has a fully unique helmet model, which is never shown in game. Jill Cooper, the female protagonist variant you would have been able to select for the campaign, was cut very early in development. Her model was repurposed for gates and multiplayer for a brief time, but was later replaced by her proper model. Jill's face was reused for Sloan, though. To this day, the removed gates replacement model still sits in the files. And that's pretty much all that I can remember right now. Though I can guarantee you there's still a lot more I'm simply forgetting. Okay, bye.